The Jacksonville Jaguars lost. They played better, but better is still not good enough. I'll tell you all about it here on the postcast edition of Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is your team every day here on Locked On Jaguars. We thank you for making us your first listen. We welcome you to the postcast of today's 24 to 20 loss to the Houston Texans. I'm Tony Wiggins, the host of Locked On Jaguars, where you can find us everywhere you hear podcasts and on the Locked On Jaguars YouTube page. Thank you for joining us to all the everydayers. We're glad to have you here. Um, we'll get right to it. Here's what we're going to talk about. We've got two halves of the show, the second half, 0-4 start. You can't you know, say it any differently. They're 0-4, no matter how spirited today's effort was. No moral victories, though. That's where we're going to start here. They lose 20-24. to 24. I always like to put the Jaguars score first. The Houston Texans. They had their way with them in the second half. The Jaguars appeared to be in full control of this game, uh, up seven with the ball, driving, and then all of a sudden the Jaguars turned into, well, the Jaguars. Couldn't convert on fourth down. Uh, well, actually what they tried to do, they tried to kick a field goal. Well, they should have kicked a field goal. They tried to go for it uh, after uh, Tank Bigsby broke a long run and Brian Thomas Jr. was doing his thing, and it put him in position to actually – go up it was 20 to 17 at that point they could have gone up six now i know y'all are saying well they probably still wouldn't have won because houston ran the clock out and they scored a touchdown and the jaguars didn't have time no at that point the jaguars had a ton of momentum and then when they got stopped houston grabbed the momentum and from that point they got closer and closer and closer and the Jaguars just did not do what they needed to do to win, as has been all season. They're 0-4 now. C.J. Stroud had a day, and this might make you think that the defense did not play well. That is not true. This is where numbers don't tell the whole story. They don't lie, but they don't tell the whole truth. C.J. Stroud was 27 for 40 for 345 yards and two touchdowns. Nico Collins had a day, 12 catches, 151 yards. You kind of figured that that was going to happen, though, with the Jaguars having so many injuries in the secondary i'll get to some players that i thought played extremely well uh today uh injury note real quick josh hines allen uh went out went out in concussion protocol and did not return we'll have to keep an eye on that and monitor that as we move forward uh for the jaguars tank bigsby seven carries 90 yards brian thomas jr had a day six uh catches for 86 yards and a tutty Trevor Lawrence is 18 for 33 for 169 yards and two touchdowns. That doesn't sound that bad, but now we're going to get into the meat of it, and I'm going to tell you why it was awful, because Trevor Lawrence missed at least two touchdowns when guys were running wide open. They could have blew this game open in the first half. He was just off. And, and now the national media and the people that are calling the games, which when there's a home game, I don't hear them because I'm at the stadium in the press box. But the road games, he's done it and they haven't said anything. But finally today, somebody pointed out on multiple occasions about him spinning out and pirouetting out. Open, you know, reversing out towards his left and having to reset his eyes when he's trying to uh, avoid and evade pass rushers. He just has to learn how to not do that. And it makes him look like he has like the worst pocket presence of any quarterback in the league. So there's a theme with Trevor Lawrence that's growing now. He'll make a throw that, that'll that make you, your eyes pop out, right? And then he'll make two that'll make, that'll, it'll, you, you really would wonder why he would do certain things. Doug Peterson and Press Taylor, and, and I'm, I'm real getting real close to calling them, um, it's something I'm gonna try to combine their names in a way because man, I'm I'm telling you, man, it's something else, man. They put them in some awful situations. They had the run going. Uh Houston's I'm gonna tell you right now, Houston's interior. We're talking about what they can do and how far they can go. They better fix the interior of that defensive line because today they were cheeks. And y'all know what I mean when I say cheeks, they were terrible. So they were getting gashed right up the middle with whether it was Tank Bigsby whether it was Travis Etienne at some point, they both got going. I know Bigsby had a big day. He had 90 yards. He had a huge run that he absolutely broke off earlier. 
and, and then ETN even got going and had 50 yards uh, running. Brian Thomas Jr. had a reverse of 13 yards. So when you look at the numbers, you'll say, hey, man, the Jacksonville Jaguars had like almost 160 yards rushing on minimum carries, maybe 24, 25 carries. They had like, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Like, what, what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is they never string anything together for a long period of time. Like they'll play well early. They'll play well in stretches. And then all of a sudden they'll disappear and then they'll try to reappear and then they'll disappear. And then it seems like the coach either starts coaching uh, scared or it seems like the coach gets to the point where he starts having too much courage and doing things that he shouldn't like going for a field goal uh, on fourth and go from the one when you just couldn't get it in in three straight plays. I mean, what do you think is going to happen on this last play? And then they called a, a quarterback draw from the shotgun. And when they lined up and everybody was spread out, I don't remember who it was on TV. I think it was either Devin McCourty or uh, Tiki Barber. They went quarterback draw. And a, a former Jaguar – Foley Fadakasi stopped it. So now it's like they're telegraphing stuff. They just can't get out of their own way when it comes to play calling. They really, really can't. And I, most of y'all are sick of it. Everybody, is, the, the one day the offensive line actually kind of does okay and holds up pretty good, right? You know, they they do all right. They They, they block, they protect Trevor. Still doesn't happen. The Jaguars find a way to lose the game all over again. I'm going to tell you, man, a little bit more about some of the things that are disheartening and why I'm really, really, I know it might not happen anytime soon, but I'm really, really leaning towards them making some serious changes. And I don't know how it's going to operate and who's going to run the team and who they're going to call. But I'm only even put my man uh, uh, Nielsen, Ryan Nielsen, in the line of fire a little bit because I thought that he did a couple of things that, Oh, he's been doing it all year that I really, really don't understand. I'll talk about all of those things in just a second here on the postcast on Locked on Jaguar. Today's show. Today's show is sponsored and brought to you by FanDuel, man. I hope y'all got your FanDuel stuff here, man, because I did and I might be doing all right on it. You can do the same thing, man, because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. All you got to do is go to FanDuel, right? Right in the middle of the game, whether you want to do it at the start of the game or in the middle, and you can check out the latest stats, view live, play by play, and so much more on the same page. You don't have to exit that page to go and check on how, how are your games are going right where you make your bets you're going to be able to see exactly what's going on in all of the action and you'll get started with 200 dollars in bonus bets you heard me 200 dollars in bonus bets you will get started guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet your first five dollar bet with FanDuel, america's number one sports book and you'll get 200 dollars in bonus bets that's fanduel.com and today's show is brought to you and sponsored by Game Time. Man, if you're trying to get tickets, I was just trying to get my daughter some tickets to this game today. And then she told me she didn't want to go, right? But sometimes people change their mind. Like you might change your mind at the last minute and you might want to go and actually get some tickets. And it's never too late when you have Game Time because Game Time specializes in just that. Last minute tickets, the lowest price guarantee. There's a new feature called Game Time Picks. That makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Here's what you got to do. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL. That's all one word, Locked On NFL, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Man, it is game time. All right. 
second half of the postcast here on another losing Sunday here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I will try to give them a little credit right here before I get to checking off some more demerits for the Jaguars. I one first of all to the fans. I I saw all the interactions today. And as much as you guys talk bad about the team when things aren't going well, you always seem to show up and still be very, very invested in their success. That's kind of love. They don't seem like they deserve these days. Their 0-4 got off to an 0-4 start. But let me talk about some good things. Ventrell Miller was a good thing. I think Ventrell Miller showed you what it would be like if you had him and Foy Oluwakon playing next to each other because Devin Lloyd didn't play today. He was inactive. Uh, with an injury i don't know how they're gonna figure it out or how they do it but i think that's what we need to start seeing a little bit more of moving forward and right, no disrespect to, and we were sitting there talking about devin lloyd and, and chad muma like you know hey man that's that's the battle it looks like to me ventrell miller if they can play side by side if they can figure it out him and foy a little comment when foy comes back i mean by then this team might be 0 7 or 0 and 8 but still you still want to try to put your best uh, people on the field. Um, he played pretty good today. Uh, Ledbetter didn't do too bad of a job. I know everybody wants to run Antonio Johnson out of town. Monteric Brown played really well, and some people told me he played well last year in a limit in limited opportunities, maybe better than what we all thought. People that were in the building, who at that time they ain't in the building no more, but they thought that it, it, it doesn't surprise them that he's able to do some of the things that he did today. And I think he did. I think he showed up really, really well for himself. He may deserve, even when Tyson Campbell comes back, he may deserve uh, a, a look at even more playing time. Maybe they can find a way to play both of those guys together uh, moving forward. But just too much disjointed stuff, man. It's like when you need it, it would have reminded me of, here's what it reminded me of. It, it sort of reminded me a little bit of the Miami game, except where the Jaguars really, really came out hot against Miami. And then they went stone cold. It wasn't really quite like that. They got off to a little bit of a slow start, but then they picked it up and then it looked like they were in control of the game. And then there was just one thing that just happens. And, and I'm telling you, it, 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 it was almost just like the Travis ETN fumble in Miami. They go on a long drive. They take it from deep in their own territory. Tank busts the run, and he almost scored a touchdown. And so I think if he scores that touchdown, they probably win the game. They'll figure out a way to win the game. But kudos to the Houston DB that kind of tripped him up, and he stepped out of bounds. They ended up getting the ball to the one-yard line after first down, and they had three more plays. Three. They try to dive. They they tried a couple of dives, didn't work, and then they tried to, to play with Trevor, and it just did not work. And it seems like a lot of stuff that they're trying with Trevor these days does not work. I, I, I can go on record and tell you right now, Trevor Lawrence isn't a bust. Trevor Lawrence just right now is not playing like a guy with, with the stature that he had coming out and where he's supposed to be, he's not where he's supposed to be. Now, there could be a lot because of that. You could talk about the offensive line. You could talk about Doug Peterson and Press Taylor. At some point, He, you know, the first couple of years, he didn't have good weapons at receiver. Whatever it is, right now, I believe the receivers he has, all right. The offensive line, I don't think is very good. But on a day like today, you can't even point to that as being the problem. You can't because – the opportunities that they had to make plays where he just flat out missed one time it was christian kirk another time it was brian thomas jr they were absolutely wide open and there was no reason why those throws those are nfl throws where you just can't put that on, on right on the numbers but he missed then it was a day that christian kirk looked like he was cooking brian thomas jr wanted all the smoke from everybody by the way these guys are gonna have to stop doing that little thing when they point like they're pointing the gun they're just not they were allowing it at one point and now all of a sudden they're gonna call it every single time but that was an inopportune uh mistake that pushed the jaguars back out they had a little bit more momentum but they they had every single opportunity to win and take control of this game and the narratives would have changed that they were able to beat and and play tough 
one of the uh, teams that most people thought were, run, were one of the preeminent teams in the National Football League in the Houston Texans. I know the stats are going to say that it looked like those guys were dominant. Trust me, they were not. They had 17 points with a minute left to go in the game. So the defense bent, but whenever they needed to buckle down, they did just that. They pretty much, uh, the running game was pretty much null and void for most of the game. Stroud just killed them with extended plays. And, oh, let me show you. He, I'm, it's called stepping up into the pocket. When there was pressure from whether it be Trayvon or Abdullah or whoever, he always found a way to step up into the pocket and avoid it. The defense isn't going to be giving any a whole bunch of credit, maybe for two sacks on the day. Uh, I believe they're going. I know they're going to give Led better one, and I think they gave it to either Roy Robinson Harris or they have to with Roy Robinson Harris and y Yasir Abdullah. But there were a whole bunch of holding plays on Laramie Tunsil, and a few of them was on Trayvon, and I think a couple of them were on Josh Allen. But they had him in a blender. So those holding plays that take people back 10 yards, those are almost just as good as sacks as just as not a loss of down. So even with that, I'll tell you, I didn't think they were terrible, but they the Jaguars just – he climbed the pocket and he made NFL throws that a quarterback should make. And unfortunately, Trevor hasn't made a whole bunch of those. Like I say, if you look at the two or three best throws in the game, Trevor probably had them both. But that variance between those – throws that make you realize how talented he is talented he is and the consistency that you need to be a winner in the national football league right now we're just not seeing it and today all of these games haven't been his fault today i'm still gonna put it on press and i'm still gonna put it on doug and like i say they're one and the same i call them dress or or, or maybe i'll call them pug or something but they're one and the same and uh Trevor also didn't deliver today. It's just a lot of talking about those are the guys, too, that are the main guys that are talking. Let me tell you about Ryan Nielsen real quick because this is, this is a postcast. I, I, I have to get used to and understand the reason why every three or four plays guys are running off the field. And you say you're trying to save energy, but if you're running them off the field every three or four plays, you ain't saving energy because they're jogging off the field. Pl players rest during the huddle during in between plays in the NFL when people aren't running tempo. I just don't get it that when it's a critical part of the game that you look out there, Ledbetter had a good game, but he's a backup. Tyler Lacey was in there. He played a lot more today. He even started the second half. I get sick and tired of looking out there and seeing backups, and it's still a critical juncture of the game early. I, I, I just have a problem with all of that rotating, especially when it doesn't appear that it's helping you win anything. I just need the best players on the, on the field. I do one good thing. They look like they started going through running everything through Brian Thomas Jr. because that he was their best player. So I, I do applaud them for that. But they're owing for the Colts will come in here next week, and uh, Anthony Richardson likely probably won't be the quarterback. It'll be Joe Flacco, and they beat the undefeated Steelers today. So uh, get ready for that. Make sure you catch me tomorrow on Locked on Jaguars, every single day on Locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We will always, uh, we're going to give it to you. We're going to give it to you, bro. I'm going to dissect this thing, and uh, I'm not going to sugarfoot it or make you feel better about anything. Make sure you check me out on Locked on Jaguars. And then check out Locked on NFL, a lot of stuff. And the Jaguars are floating around the league in everybody's mouth. In the morning, Tyler Rowland to hit you. It's two Locked on NFL shows early in the morning. It's Tyler Rowland with... Uh, he's the madman, and he'll hit you with a double shot of espresso, and then you catch me in the barbershop in the middle of the day around lunchtime, and we'll tell you about everything going on around the NFL. That's Locked on NFL, wherever you get your podcast, wherever you hear your podcast, and then on YouTube to watch. All right, you guys take care of each other. We'll see you next time here on Locked on Jaguars.